Hey, what's up guys? It's Epic Lando with you guys again, and it's great to be back again. Okay, so I've been taking a break because I've been studying for a for some papers for a certain qualification, yeah, which I'm not going to review. But anyways, today we're going to be talking about Apocalypse Ravi. So, she's new. She's a new Net5 ML, and most of you would already have her, except for me, of course. I may be pulling for her pretty soon, but uh, not now, of course. I, I just need to get the feels for it. Okay, anyways, um, let's go over her skills first, and then I'll go through a recommended build that I think would actually be very fitting for her, and that would be uh, beneficial long term. Okay, so first up, uh, Spectral X. So it attacks with an X as a single target, and the damage is proportional to the uh, Ravi's health. And it also uh, life steals a little bit. Uh, the stats. Okay, let's go through the stats. Um, the stats will be scaling off uh, health, which is twelve percent of the of her health and twenty percent on soul burn. So that's actually pretty great. It's uh, similar to uh, Dark Corvus uh, S tree, except for the multipliers are completely different. Um, the soul burn effect is uh, one point eight for the attack multiplier instead of 1 and with a power multiplier of 0 0.95 as for the heal, uh, it's 30% of the damage gained as life but because Ravi is going to be extremely thick uh, the life steal isn't going to be much at all unless of course you put a uh, life steal set on her then that will be a totally different case but anyways uh, let's move on. So let's go on to the War God's Might. So it increases crit chance and also uh, it heals every time you get hit for a cost of 10 Fighting Spirit. And the heal is proportional to max health. And the proportion is 6% and up till 8% if you max this out. So uh, in other words, it's like a Water's Origin but very extremely downscaled because um, honestly speaking her health is just going to be immense with most of the time she will not have very high defense so in other words she'll be taking more uh, in terms of percentage damage uh, as compared to someone like a healer with uh, with with uh, at least a defense equipment on it so, in other words, you don't really have to count too much on the self-heal, but the crit chance will definitely help in the long run, especially when you're fighting a uh, a long battle. And now for the S3. The S3 is when it's an it's a single target, it grants skill nullifier. When you kill an enemy, it also revives an ally, granting that uh, skill nullifier on that ally, not on yourself. And the damage is proportional to the max health, which is 20% of max health, with a multiplier of 1.3 and 0 0.95. And yes, this is the skills. So let's go on with the stats. Let's look at the stats. Awakened. Okay, so her attack is pretty subpar. Her health is extremely high, actually. And her defense is very good as well. The speed is on the low side. There's no bonus in crit chance or uh, crit damage. So, in other words... Uh, the the best build you can go for her is basically as much health as possible, but at the same time you do not want to de to neglect uh, like speed or defense and attack as well, because those are extremely essential, and there are many builds that that you guys can actually go for. One recommended build that I was thinking of is actually the uh, effect resistance build. So in other words, um, <clears throat> you could go with a counter set with a lot of effect resistance, with as much health as possible. So in other words, it became, it'll, she'll just become like a, a self-healing, annoying, uh, what do you call that, a bruiser, that will just uh, delay the enemy a lot. It can be paired well with Dark Corvus, and anyone that is extremely thick as well, like normal Corvus as well, in fact. Anyways... Apart from that, uh, some other recommended builds is actually going with speed. You cannot go wrong with speed because, in other words, you can actually reset the S3 sooner. 
In fact, if you are able to reset the S3 sooner, that would mean that you will be able to revive your allies sooner as well. And that would also pair well with one of the artifacts, one of the new artifacts, which is... Let me see if I can find it. Ah, here we go. Creation and Destruction. So in other words, this will help you reset the cooldown for the S3 to go again. Oh! Oh yeah, okay. So it's not like the, the, the regular Ravi where it requires Fighting Spirit to go on. This actually has a cooldown. So yes, that will actually be extremely useful, up to 20% if you have uh, fully fully upgraded the artifact. So yes, that would allow her to revive the allies more often and also you can scale off that 20% uh, uh, proportional damage to her max health. So what kind of health are you trying to look for? Okay, so let's be realistic here. Let's take a base percentage of 60%, assuming you're going to go for uh, speed HP HP. That would be about 120%, uh, just right from your ring and your necklace. And then uh, coming from your substats, you might be expecting another 60%, so that would give you about 180%. So in other words, you should add 180% on top of that 7,000, which would give... Let me just bring up my calculator here. So 7,000 times uh, 1.8. That would be an additional 12,000. So if you add that on top of the 7,000, she would optimally have about 20k HP. So that's assuming you use a speed boot with uh, at least 60% max health, uh, sorry, health percentage subs on the rest of your equipments, uh, not taking into account the ring and necklace. Okay, so apart from that, another build that I have actually thought of is perhaps... Let me see where's the artifact. It's actually relating to an artifact that I have sort of seen somewhere that I cannot remember at the moment. Oh, where did it go? Hmm, apologies, apologies. Let me just find it for a little bit and I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I found it. Okay, so other than that, you can actually use the Secret Scythe along with an attack set or perhaps uh, a, a HP set or any relating sets that you think might be good. Or you can even use a Lifesteal set just for the additional Lifesteal bonus. And Secret Scythe will give you additional attack up plus also the additional uh, Lifesteal when you have your HP below 50%. That means you get a full heal, in other words, or almost a full heal. Uh, like for an example, when Corvus, Dark Corvus uses uh, his S3, he's able to suck up uh, quite a percentage of his damage uh, on a Soul Burn especially. And for Ravi's case, she can use it on her S1, Soul Burn. So that would actually help her to recover from the battle. Let's say you're running, out, running low on HP, you can actually use that as well. But optimally, optimally, optimally speaking, I would still prefer the build regarding this. Uh, where, did I, where did it go again? Creation and Destruction. Yes. So optimally, I think Creation and Destruction will be the best artifact for her. Uh, stacking as much HP as she can get, as well as defense. And on top of that, I think that the counter set would actually be the best artifact for her. But... I feel that she doesn't really need as much speed as most of the other uh, characters, like for example, uh, ML Cecilia. So, I would say a safe amount of speed to get is about 150. You can get that all from subs. But at the same time, that you that will also require you to have extremely good RNG. So, just do your best. Try to aim around 150 speed, stack up your HP as much as possible. You can go with a HP, HP, HP on the right side. That will give you a solid about 25k HP, easy peasy. And yeah, 
that should settle your Ravi dreams. Okay, so anyways, thank you guys for watching, and I hope my uh, my suggestion would help the most of you. So yes, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Ciao!